Thank you, Claire. 646 the time, and this month marks the 30th anniversary of NASCAR's debut at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway back in 1994. And on Sunday, July 21st, NASCAR returns to the two-and-a-half-mile oval for the Brickyard 400 once again. Exciting stuff here to tell us more about the celebration and changes coming to the race this year. IMS President Doug Bowles joins us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for uh, joining us here on 44 yeah. News this morning. Yeah, happy to do it. It's hard to believe it's been 30 years since that first Brickyard 400. Uh, she'll quickly mention she wasn't alive <laughs> during the first 1994. Yeah, I wasn't even born yet. We were talking about that earlier. But, but I was. Uh, I can uh, say that. Uh, quite a few things, though, that we want to touch on this morning because it's a lot of stuff going on later this month. Uh, the weekend of racing wraps up Sunday, July 21st, but the weekend celebrations and events will start leading up to that. Kind of tell us more about what folks uh, here in the Hoosier State can expect. Yeah, well, we'll start things off next week with our hauler parade, which we've done almost every year, really, since the beginning of uh, the Brickyard 400 in Indianapolis, where all the haulers that are bringing the teams and their cars into the Speedway, they stop on Main Street just outside our front gate, give our fans an opportunity to engage with them, see them. That happens on the Thursday night. Then those cars come in, they get unloaded and get ready to go racing. We'll have practice on Friday. On Saturday, we'll have our Xfinity race, which is the series right below the cup cars. And then the cup race, uh, the 30th anniversary of the Brickyard 400 presented by PPG on Sunday. So we're excited about it. We're really excited to have them back on the Oval. They've been on the road course the last few years. It should be a fun weekend. And we've had 100 years of history with the Indianapolis 500. What has the difference been in hosting a race during the summer months at IMS compared to the Indy 500, which, you know, happens in late spring? I mean, it's really, really yeah. hot at the track if there's, during those months. It is definitely hot at the track in July. And, it, you know, May, you could get really hot or you could get really cold. And the difference is a lot of years, we just had our 108th running in the Indy 500, just getting ready for this young young event, the 30th uh, anniversary of the Brickyard. And obviously the attendance for the Indy 500 is massive compared to just about every other event on earth, especially uh, racing events. So that's different. But the one thing we try and be consistent, 15 and under are free. We really try and focus on families. We want this to be a family atmosphere, a family event. And we're excited to have the NASCAR drivers here for both the race on Saturday and the race on Sunday next weekend. And we're kind of seeing footage from last year's road course race. That was a, a mild success there for about three or four years at IMS. And I guess it was born out of uh, maybe the weather, uh, you know, it being very oppressively hot during the summer and that uh, a lot of cement there at that property. Uh, what was the reason for the transition back to the two and a half mile oval? Well, the, the biggest one was it's the 30th anniversary of that first race in 1994. So celebrating the way we started in 1994, Jeff Gordon's win in 1994. Jeff will be here as part of uh, the weekend next weekend. So that was really part of it. And then the road course was a little bit of an experiment to see how the cars ran on the road course. Part of it was born out of necessity during 2020 when we were going through COVID and trying to figure out how you put an IndyCar schedule and a NASCAR schedule on the same weekend. So really from 2020 through last year, IndyCar and NASCAR shared this weekend. This will be the first year since 2019. It's just the cup cars and the Xfinity cars and, and no IndyCar. IndyCar will actually be in Toronto next weekend. So um, it's, it's a little bit of necessity there, but also wanting to switch it up a little bit and see how the cars performed on the road course versus the oval. And Doug, tell us a little bit about what fans should maybe prepare for during a hot summer day at the track. Well, one of the things we always remind people, it's really important to hydrate. We do allow coolers, so we encourage people, you know, put some waters in those coolers. Make sure you're hydrating. We'll have hydration stations and all that that here, especially if, if the heat is there. But we do encourage people uh, to, to try and stay out of the heat a little bit. Most of our seats for the Brickyard that, that we have open are covered seats, so we give people an opportunity for shade. But again, it's just making sure you don't sit in the sun too long. We've all done it, right? We've all gotten to a point where we've been on a beach or we've been somewhere and we just forget to drink our water. And the end of the day that makes a big challenge so we're just really reminding people just stay hydrated and enjoy the day and we do hope attendance is up once again for the brickyard 400 i i know that there's a uh, demand for tickets for the indianapolis 500 that begins a week oh. after the race wraps up i know firsthand you have to get those things in the mail is it a little easier to obtain tickets for the brickyard 400 this time especially with all the excitement surrounding it this time for sure. You know, the Indianapolis 500 is nearly 350,000 people that are here for that event and really fill every one of our 235,000 permanent seats. And then you've got everybody in the infield to really make that number work. So we're going to be more in the neighborhood of 60 to 70,000 people here. So it's basically the size of an NFL football game, uh, but there's an awful lot more space. So so you can make a decision. You can wait for the weather if you want the weekend of the race. Say, you know what, we're going to drive up to Indianapolis and, and check it out. So it is a little bit easier to obtain tickets. It's a little bit easier to sit in some of our premium seats as well because you're in that 60 to 70,000 range, not 350,000.
And before we wrap up, you know, just for yourself personally, you got so much going on there. How excited are you for this upcoming event? So this is, other than the Indianapolis 500, this is our second biggest event of the year. So I'm really excited about it. I'm excited to get back on the Oval. I'm excited to celebrate the heritage and the history of this event that's now been around for 30 years. And Jeff Gordon, the, you know, the Kissing of the Bricks tradition started with Dale Jarrett in 1996 at the Brickyard. It didn't start uh, with IndyCar. So a lot of those traditions that even carry over to May start at the Brickyard. So I'm always happy to celebrate NASCAR coming back to Indianapolis. Doug Bowles, president of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Great to talk to you. Maybe next time, I know you're excited about this year's event, maybe next year you'll be equally as excited and you'll drive a uh, NASCAR pace car down here like you did a few years ago <laughs> with the IndyCar event. Yeah, I love getting down there. We had a big event in May down in Evansville. We'll definitely have another one in May next year in Evansville. Really important part of our of our community and, and so many folks from Evansville make the trek up here for our event. So really appreciate it. And I do used to date a girl in Evansville, so I spent a lot of time down at Evansville. I think, I think he's, uh, yeah, I think he always mentions <laughs> Thank that. You. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank Doug Bowles, you. president of IMS, and I uh, hope you have a great weekend coming up. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll send it over to Griffin Glasscock. We don't have race weather to worry about down here in southern Indiana, but we did have a wild day of weather in the tri